Well, we're finally here at the University of St. Joseph of Beirut campus. And the reason we're being here, as we're panning around, you'll see shortly enough, is because we're going to head right over there. That is the MIM Museum right here on Damascus Road. And it is world famous, as you know. So why don't you come join me? We're going to go take a look inside the museum. And as we walk our way into the center kind of atrium here, we can start seeing a little bit more detail of the MIM Museum here. The lighted area that you see to the left there is their gift shop. And right in front of the entrance is this huge quartz cluster that came straight from Brazil. And this is created with minimal barriers, so people actually are encouraged to come up and make physical contact with it. And it is 360, so you can walk all around it. There's even a platform here that you can step up if you want to get a special selfie shot with yourself and the quartz in the background. And then to the left here is the museum gift shop. And then this is Damascus Road right there. And you come into the entrance of the museum like this. You have the guard and the ticket taker here. And to get to the museum proper, we start heading down these stairs right here. And here we start entering the museum proper. So as we exit the stairwell, we go into the grand atrium of the MIM. And so, I mean, you have crystal shapes over there. You have these columns here, which kind of echo the uh, Roman architecture, the Roman ruins that are so well known in this part of the world. And general kind of cinema area here. You have some fantastic fossils, Lebanese fossils over there, and a little viewing area here. This is actually a 3D simulation game where you stand there and you can control the pterodactyl as, as it's flying through the, the chasm. And then on these columns, they have uh, samples of fantastic minerals just kind of to serve as an appetizer for people about to go into the main exhibit. And again, Salim did an excellent job of kind of outlining all of this in our Mineral Talks Live interview with him. So definitely refer back to that. This is just going to be a kind of a quick walkthrough of the entire gallery. Uh, but uh, this is designed to go hand in hand with that Mineral Talks Live interview we did with him. Uh, it's episode 13. There's a link at the bottom of the screen. Here's a fabulous quartz that is actually kind of floating there. And uh, this is a Brazilian quartz, just absolutely crystal clear and a great way to uh, kind of tease the entrance to the main hall here. So as you come in here, it's very dark, which is nice because it focuses your eyes on the lit displays here. And this area here are the nine different uh, classes of, um, of mineralogy um, with samples of each mineral uh, reflecting that class. So uh, this is the native uh, elements. Number two would be the sulfides and sulfide, whoops, sorry, the sulfurs and sulfa salts. Uh, here you have the halides. This is an absolutely incredible fluorite. I think it was here when we did the Mineral Talks Live interview, but again, that is such an incredible piece. Um, quite possibly one of the best of species in terms of uh, fluorites from Switzerland. And then here you have the oxides and hydroxides. 
spectacular malachite representing the carbonates and uh, uh, the borates. Look at that piece. Salim likes to call this his Emerald City. And it goes on and on and on. This is uh, uh, six. These are the sulfides and uh, chromates, molybdenites, uh, tungstates. There's a great barite from the U.S. And this just leads you right into the main gallery. And all of these subsequent cases are based on the nine classifications that we just kind of went through. And again, I ask you to go back and take a look at the Mineral Talks Live interview for kind of more in-depth reviews and um, views of all these things. The, the displays do change uh, from time to time. So I can't remember exactly what he had on display, but uh, absolutely fantastic. And it just, it's wonderful how it leads you through and you have these cabinets that are not all at 90 degree angles, you have some angled ones, and so it creates a sense of uh, a dynamic walkways going through. I think we got a children's group coming in right now. Um, just one of, you know, resting spots. Over here is the trophies case. Just some of the fantastic specimens, great examples. That Lagrandite really stands out, and that's kind of the the centerpiece of the trophies case. And uh, again, you want to talk uh, uh, top of species? We're looking at that Lagrandite right there. And it just continues on and on. Very dynamic, draws you through incredible pieces. Here are some large, oh, let me show you a fun one. This one right here, if you go and you watch that Mineral Talks Live, we actually watch that as it's being unpacked for the first time. And so now it is on display in the, uh, in the MIM collection. And then these are some more recent acquisitions that uh, don't even have the labels yet, but uh, Brazilian tourmaline, Malcolm tourmaline from Russia. That's a killer piece right there, Brazilian. Namib Namibian, just fabulous pieces. I don't remember if this was on the original uh, or if that was being displayed back when we did the Mineral Talks Live, but this is both a beautiful piece, a beautiful example of uh, just some stunning aquamarines, but also the association that you have in there. Absolutely wonderful. Over there is the Worldwide Collection tourmaline slices, and then of course, this is the, uh, this is the vault. And you have a series of incredible pieces in here, all singled out, treated much like individual pieces of art. And just fabulous. Look at that huge yellow diamond right in the center there. Great Kongsberg right there. Some Mockingbird gold. <laughs> it's just, I mean, this is, just, this is such an incredible room. Here you have some uh, ruby, sapphire. You have a green sapphire in the right corner there. Some killer emeralds. Uh, again, the colors on this camera... Green is one of the most difficult colors to film. Uh, the color of the specimen right here looks a little too blue in the camera to me, but trust me when I say that that Colombian emerald right there is truly the perfect color of emerald. Absolutely stunning. Wonderful topaz there. Speaking of topaz, here's some imperial topaz, some red topaz, just killer, killer pieces. And you can, you can easily just get lost in here.
Some great opals, black opal there on the left. Namibian amethyst. This is wonderful. This is a tanzanite, but you can see quite clearly from this view. Uh, hopefully the colors are okay, but you get the clear blue there. If you come over on this side, you can see it's starting to change to that purple. And if you come around the back, let's hope this shows up in the camera, and go up, looking down the C-axis. You can't see it because it's too dark, but to my naked eye, I can see that you've got that wonderful plum. You can see a little bit of a plum in the left specimen there. But uh, you've got the, uh, the three colors of the, of the tanzanite that shows that it is not heat treated at all. And just a spectacular specimen. Another great aquamarine. And that is the vault room. I think they call it the vault room. And it's just spectacular. Oh, here's a, here's a great rhodochrosite from the Sweet Home Mine. This is from Graham's Pocket. Come on, Gimbal. There we go. Spectacular color, fabulous piece. So then we'll continue out again. This is just a quick review of what the museum looks like. We've seen more details in the Mineral Talks Live interview that Salim did. We're going to go into the international section real quick. And these are specimens from all over the world. You have Australians, South Africa in here. I'm sorry, South America in here. Uh, Mexico. United States, we have Europe, here's Italy, Great Britain, Spain, uh, Asia, we have Pakistan up here, and India, South Korea, uh, Namibia, now we're in the Africa section, we have Namibia, Madagascar, South Africa, just incredible to allow people to see where in the world all these people, these pieces come from. And then this great interactive map that allows the visitors to kind of uh, explore different areas in the world where these minerals come from. So, no, 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 it's fine. Keep going, keep going, enjoy. <laughs> yeah, so satisfies anyone's curiosity. <laughs> And that is the MIM, and as you come out, you have this lovely amethyst heart, all natural. And then these are some kind of neat things. I think uh, um, Salim showed these uh, in the interview, but you can't see it because it's just this is just a single lens, but looking at it with both eyes, uh, there are two lenses in there that creates a certain amount of parallax so that when you look at this, the specimen, which is also in here, appears to be floating out in space here. So to my eyes, I'm actually, my fingers are touching the bottom of the, uh, of the aquamarine there. And three different heights for everybody. And that is pretty much the MIM Museum. Again, as fabulous as it looks on film, this is the kind of thing where you have to visit it live. I mean, I've, in preparing for the Mineral Talks live video uh, or interview, Salim and I spent a lot of time together going over the videos and reviewing things and talking about it. So I had a really good idea of what the MIM Museum looked like uh, just through videos and through photos. But my great excitement in coming out here was being able to see everything live in three dimension and it the videos and the photos do absolutely zero justice to the actual experience of being here this is a new piece that uh i don't even think proper photographs have even been taken of this piece it is an azurite from nopias mine in mexico incredibly sharp crystals on a beautiful white matrix it just makes that thing pop and uh 
beautiful piece right out here in one of the columns. What a what an introduction and what a walkthrough of the museum. So again, this is honestly, this is something that you have to experience for yourself. There's no way that we can properly cover what it feels like being here and what it feels like being able to spend time inside this fabulous museum and get to know all these pieces. So um, that's my quick overview. We will be coming back again in the future. Absolutely.